I wanted to talk about a book which I think anybody who does Tai Chi should read. Anybody and everybody. It is this book, The Taoist Body, by uh, Christopher Shipper. And as far as I'm concerned, it is the foundational text for anybody who does any kind of Chinese martial art. Um, mostly, be it's not about Tai Chi. It's not even about martial arts, even though they are mentioned in the book. But it is about how Taoism um, was lived. And the stories that the, this man, Christopher Schipper, the author, um, who's Dutch and studied in all of the great universities in France and Paris, went to Taiwan to study Taoism in the 60s. And basically, up until then, and still mostly, um, a lot of the Taoist studies were done by scholars who were more interested in the philosophical aspect of it. So they would read the Tao Te Ching, do these kind of studies. Um, but it was never really studied as a practice religion. And um, the author, Christopher Shipper, then when he was in Taiwan, he actually noticed that even his Chinese um, uh, fellow students and, and uh, researchers would often simply go to the library, read, read the books about Taoism or read the, some of the texts about Taoism and did studies and all that. But it was always very dry because, um, especially for the Chinese scientists, and uh, they were not interested in Taoism as a practiced religion. Uh, for them, there was a bit of shame. It, it was tied with all of this kind of medieval thought that they were that the entire Chinese revolution was about and trying to get away from to modernize China and all that. So Taoism was this kind of not so well respected, ancient, old, archaic religion. So none of them had bothered to actually go out and study the people who were still practicing Taoism because there were Taoist temples in Taiwan at the time. So. Christopher Shipper is the one who actually went out and start, started to talk to people and actually went to some of these Taoist religious rituals and witnessed uh, a tradition that was still alive. And one of the things that shocked him is that he realized that some of the texts that these Taoist priests were using were thousand-year-old texts that often only existed as fragments in some very specialized libraries. And here they were being used in liturgical practices by this small Taoist temple in rural Taiwan. And so he started studying with them because he wanted to know more. So he went and actually became a Taoist priest. And he's one of the few scholars on Taoism who's actually a Taoist priest. And it's not about the fact that he was a Westerner. Even there's very few Chinese researchers who are also that involved in Taoist practice. So he was one of the few researchers and anthropologists and sociologists who, who was actually then brought into the actual living tradition of Taoism. And that's the important point. And in his book, so The Taoist Body, um, he basically lays out this kind of Taoist worldview as practice. So not as a philosophy, but as practice and as how it was practiced and how it evolved. And that's the context that anybody who does Tai Chi should know because it illuminates so many different little tidbits of the practice, um, where Tai Chi comes from, why it's the shape that it is, why it evolved this way, why the fact that Yang Chan took what was this village practice, this village martial art, Chen, Chen style, you know, talking about Chen village, and took it into the, you know, the, Peking, the, you know, Beijing, the, uh, the capital, he took it from one world to another. And those two worlds so of rural Taoist China and imperial urban life, those were completely separated worlds. And so you see how one world was brought into this new urban world and evolved and changed. And so you have the evolution of the Yang style that then went into all the other styles of Tai Chi. Um, but some of the ideas, some of the concepts, some of the influences on Tai Chi are found in this book. And they're not obvious. Especially if you haven't read this book, you wouldn't know for the importance of the, the theatrical practices that were embedded in vi village life. How martial arts and theater and the religious rituals 
were all enmeshed and developed together. The role of martial arts within village life, right? Um, all of those things and who, why martial art was developed in these, kind of these isolated rural villages throughout China and how they're tied together in between and how they evolve. All of that is explained in this book. It's not like, again, it's not a book about, about martial arts or Tai Chi, but anybody with, who has an interest in Tai Chi, Chinese martial arts, internal development and all that, will, will read through it and see all these references that, even though they're not about Tai Chi, directly uh, influence the practice uh, and the origins of Tai Chi. And that's what it's such an important body book because too often we think of Tai Chi and Taoism and kind of the philosophy and you think, okay, it's a Tao Te Ching. So you would, you know, you read the Tao Te Ching and then you do your Tai Chi practice. And the reality is that Tai Chi come, doesn't come from the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is a philosophical document that is only a sliver of the Taoist world and the Taoist experience that Tai Chi comes out of. And what this book describes is that fertile ground from which Tai Chi comes from. And it's very, very different. And it's, frankly, it's, it's far more interesting um, than just a dry reading of the Tao Te Ching. And Tao Te Ching, of course, is not exactly, it's not dry or, or uninteresting. But when you see the context of Tai Chi and where it comes from, um, it gives you license to play a little more with it because you see what Tai Chi is actually doing in some of the moves. Why some of the moves are big, why some of the hands gestures are big. Um, it gives you a hint as to how the, the trajectory of Tai Chi through time and how it came from these rural practices to the city and now into modern time and into 20th century and now 21st century and how there's an arc to it. So there's a, there's a, a specific type of changes that were made to Tai Chi. Um, but if you don't know the origin, then it's very hard to walk back to see those changes and to understand those changes. And that's why that book is so important. It gives you the mindset of the people who developed these Taoist martial arts, internal arts. Um, it gave you, gives you an idea of the, the purpose of some of the moves, some of the, um, the echoes of the liturgical practices, of the mindset of the people who were doing these, why they were doing, how they were doing it. Um, and so, like I said, that's why it gives you a little more leeway to kind of play with the form, because the form has a purpose. So it has to present certain qualities. And that's why I was always taught that Tai Chi had to be beautiful, for example. And why? Well, you, there's always these explanations of like, you know, well, uh, at least my favorite explanations, the one I clung to was the fact that, you know, beauty is a, it is a show of grace, gracefulness. So if you're graceful, right, if, if your moves are, are beautiful, it's because they're graceful. And they're graceful because they're efficient. So gracefulness is a measure of efficiency. So that's, which is a great explanation, but there's another explanation um, which comes out of this book, which is the fact that a lot of these, like I said, martial artists were also performance performers in the Taoist rituals and the Taoist rituals involved theater and performance. So you had these people who were trained martial artists who would then dress up in costumes and walk on stage and do all of these, you know, uh, martial art moves. And it's very similar to Chinese opera. Chinese opera is kind of the urban version of that, right? Where now we've, we've codified these stories and, um, you know, to present them in a f more formalized way. And you'd have, you know, in theaters in urban areas, but in rural areas where Tai Chi was from, performed and done, it was the villagers themselves who would put on these plays. They were also traveling troops of performers and all that, but you would have in the ritual itself, the Taoist ritual, so not as a, not as a performance of theater in the sense of telling a story, but as a performance of theater as a religious practice. So these Tai Chi or proto Tai Chi, the earlier forms of, of, of these um, Taoist martial arts, they would also go on stage and essentially embody spirits, warrior spirits, demons, 
and perform on stage and do all of these moves that were essentially parallel to their martial art. And so there is this, this aspect of Tai Chi then that has this idea of it's meant to be seen, it's meant to be performed, which is why it has to be beautiful. And that's why the, some of the moves are whew, a little more dramatic and because the drama is there built in from the beginning. Um, it's part of the DNA of Tai Chi is that it is meant to be a performance, uh, except it's also meant to be a religious performance. It's meant to embody all of these ideas of spirits and you know demons and you know the warfare of gods and demons and things like that. So there's all these layers now that you can add to your performance, and you can do your Tai Chi now with this this mindset, you know, this these ideas of like, okay, where can you make your performance or your your Tai Chi itself, you know, uh, have a little more pizzazz, have a little more, you know, throw in some glitter. <laughs> have a Tai Chi that has, that is a performance. Um, that's why there's all, you know, there's certain things that start to make more sense. You know, there's a, um, often they talk about the eyes and where the eyes look and you have to look at, you look in certain directions. But in, especially Chinese, like operatic performance, the eyes are also very important because they show you, you know, where you look and you, there's an expression and all that. And it's, you start seeing these little details and you're going, okay, this is where, oh yeah, now I'm, I'm looking and I'm looking these, you know, these head turns, do they make martial sense? No. Do they make theatrical sense? Hell yeah. And now suddenly it's like, oh yeah, I'm here and now I'm going to turn and look here. Yeah, that's a performance. So that's the kind of context that this book brings. And that's why I think it's fundamental because first of all, it's an easy read. It's not written in some, you know, like scientific um, language or anything like that. It's very accessible. It's fascinating. Uh, it's really eye-opening about how Taoist life was actually constructed. Not again, not philosophical Taoism, but lived, performed Taoism. Um, and it just fills in all these gaps in our knowledge about Tai Chi. And it's it's really wonderful. And it brings everything to life. And it makes for a Tai Chi that is so much richer. It's so much more fun. Um, because it has now this 3,000-year-old history of, and this is the part I love, is that these are people who get together and create all of this. Um, it's very democratic in a sense. Um, it's very much grassroots. It's literally a vill an entire village coming together and creating its own rituals, its own theater, and its own martial art. And that's the root of Tai Chi. And that's very cool. Um, it's so, because we always, think, you know, in the back of my head, we're like, oh, Yang Lu Chan, or the, you know, somebody in the Chen village invented Tai Chi. It's like, no, 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 no. It came out of these interconnected villages that were developing these martial arts and these performances and these rituals. And that's the soil of that from which Tai Chi grew. So when we finally said, oh, this is Tai Chi, you know, when Yang Lu Chen, went to the, to, uh, to the capital, that's when Tai Chi got a name. That's when we said, that's Tai Chi, and, uh, as opposed to these other martial arts. Before, it wasn't called that, because they had no reason to call their martial art. It was just the martial art of Chen village, or the martial art of whatever other village, right? So Tai Chi is named in the 1840s, when Yang Yu Chen finally goes to the capital. But its history goes back to these villages. And I know that for a lot of people, it's like, oh no, the history is that it's this Taoist saint and watched a bird and a snake fight. And that's a, and he was up in a monastery and it all came out from these philosophers and the monasteries and Taoist monks and all that. Um, except that there's no evidence of any of that. Um, but there is evidence of a rich martial art tradition within these Taoist villages that evolved. And to me, that's a, that's a better story. Um, it's a better story. It means that Tai Chi is something that we can engage with. There's a tradition of experimentation, of growth, of change. It's meant to be part of a community. It's meant to be the expression of a community's will 
to defend itself, but also to come together, to create, to have these performances. And to me, that's the, the part that in a way is new that comes out of this book and is so exciting because it really feeds that. I mean, we all, anybody who does Tai Chi, you know, the community is actually one of the, the joys of Tai Chi, coming together, doing Tai Chi together. It's very different from doing Tai Chi by yourself. And so the sense of community, you know, I mean, to push hands, you have to have a community, but just doing it as a group together, there is something about it that is very different from doing it by yourself. And it's because it comes from these villages and these villagers who developed all of these, these communities that came together and created it. Um, and so it's a way of tapping back into that tradition instead of being locked in the idea that some saint you know, developed it 2,000 years ago and it came down from the heavens and this is it and it's just this, you know, this untouchable gift uh, that we're meant to just learn and that's it. Like, no, <laughs> no. It came from the mud of the rural Chinese villages and it seemed like they had a lot of fun. Lots of fun with it. Lots of fun with their theater, lots of fun with their rituals, and that's what we can bring back into Tai Chi, which is great. So, The Taoist Body by Christopher Schipper, S-C-H-I-P-P-E-R is the last name. Um, wonderful book. Everybody should read it. Um, everybody should have it in the back of the mind when they're, whenever they're doing Tai Chi or thinking about Tai Chi or talking about Tai Chi. They should have that book in the back of their minds. Um, otherwise, I think you're... you're you're missing half the story of what we're doing and why we're doing it. So that's it.